Welcome, welcome everyone. A nice lunchtime session to spend here this well, at noon, 12 noon. Pause in breath, as we said, right? Welcome, Rihanna. And thank you for taking the time to take us through this nice lunchtime session. So thank you everyone for joining us here on Caribbean Connect as we go week to week in bringing different lunch and learn series Last week we had value stream mapping. Today we're gonna have a nice meditation and yoga session with Rihanna. So, you know, thank you again for those of us who have been joining us week to week and continuing to with our lunch and learn series. Always a nice time to spend just learning something, right? And relaxing at this point is relaxing and learning a lot. So I'm Shivani Sinarain and I'm just I'm here to introduce Rihanna and 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 just let her take the show away, right? So here, here we go. Who is Rihanna for those of us who don't know her, right? Who is Rihanna? Rihanna Lutchman is a yoga coordinator with the art of living Trinidad and Tobago and teaches the signature happiness program using breathing and meditation techniques and is dedicated to creating a stress-free, violence-free society. She has also been a teacher for over 15 years in a secondary school and part-time course coordinator with the University of the West Indies. Thank you, Rihanna. All right. Good morning. Hearing you. Yeah, hear me okay? Good. Hearing you great. So right. thank you for joining us here, everyone, with Rihanna on Caribbean Connect. Um, what she's going to bring for us, her agenda, it's a one hour complimentary session, as she said, where she entitled it, Pause in the Power of Breath with the Art of Living Trinidad and Tobago. Introduces you, she will introduce you to yogic techniques, reducing stress on the body and mind using postures, breathing and meditation. Here you'll be able to describe basic yoga techniques explore yoga postures you see Rihanna I'm sitting up upright you know I, I learned a few things already from you right learn about the importance of your breath discover the connection between your breath and mind yeah and experience refreshing and calming techniques during the lunchtime thank you Rihanna and thank you again everyone so I hand you over to Rihanna now Rihanna take it away thanks again all right, good. Well, I was going to say good morning, but good afternoon, everyone. It's lunchtime. <laughs> All right, let's just get the PowerPoint shared. I'm not too much of a PowerPoint person, but just for this. All right, so welcome again. Uh, thank you, Shivani and Caribbean Connect for the invitation. I'm, I'm happy to be here and to give everyone a little pause in their lunchtime. A little uh, relief sometimes we need to keep going. So welcome everyone to pausing in the power of the breath. You know, yesterday we started a conversation about this topic on Facebook. And we were, I was discussing a little bit about the power, what power means, but also I asked, what do you know about breath? So while I'm talking, maybe and introducing myself, even though Shivani introduced me already, maybe you can um, type in the chat, what do you know about breath? What do you know about your own breath? So I invite you as well, you can put on your cameras, the cameras focused on me and just humanize what could be a very cold um, online experience sometimes. Um, you're also in, welcome to raise hands if you have a question, type in the chat, um, unmute and speak, right? Let's have an interactive session if possible. Good, so as Shivani said, I am from the Art of Living. And the Art of Living is the largest volunteer-based or a non-profit organization in the world. We're in 156 countries and have touched over 500 million people who have gained profound inner peace, happiness, and well-being as a result. Our 
signature course is called the online is called the happiness program which is currently known as the online breath and meditation workshop and i am rihanna lutchman who is the yoga coordinator with the art of living trinidad and tobago as well as one of the happiness teachers so i um i teach in the happiness program happiness program we look at a specific breath called sky breath meditation all right so let's see what i have in the chat here so we're pausing in the power of the breath so on facebook we, we defined um power you know power is something where you think you have the ability or ca capacity to to accomplish something, to do something, whether positive or negative, it's power, usually control, right? Power is control. But the power of breath, breath is something, you know, we, we take for granted. Do we even realize that we are breathing most of the time? But it's so important to us. And we're gonna discover how important. All right. Let's see. Uh, breath is life giving. Ah, I would I would question that. I would say breath is life. <laughs> but yes, I get it. Life giving. I like it. Breath is life force. Mm -hmm. Breath is what keeps us living and strong. I would say breath maybe defines that we are alive. Yeah. Life giving, life giving. Okay, great. Thank you. Good. So I see we have Janelle, Jennifer, Jenny, Kamaya, Lati, uh, Latif, sorry. Don't know that name, Miriam, Fern, and Abigail. Welcome, guys. So, breath. How long can you go without breathing? Should we try it? How long can you go without breathing? 30 seconds, a minute. Anybody has any ideas? Two minutes. So it's interesting, most people had in their, um, their definition of life as a um, breath with the word life. And yes, breath is life. In fact, yeah, we're gonna say in about two minutes. So on average, two minutes, we can go without breath and no longer. Yet it is what defines that we are alive. Our first act of life, first act of life would have been not to cry, but before crying, to breathe in. And our last act of life would be to breathe out we cannot do without the breath yet we usually take the breath for granted and we don't utilize it fully we only use 30 percent of our lung capacity we we breathe very shallow and we also breathe in a lazy manner what i would term a lazy manner how many people breathe in using their well actually let's do a little experiment with that let's just take a, a breath in a conscious breath in and conscious breath out maybe you could type in the chat or on mute and let me know how did you breathe in what did you use nose mouth i hope nothing else but nose and mouth to breathe in ah welcome prudence ah jennifer knows a bit more mm -hmm. so to breathe in we used our nose good and to breathe out what did you use nose or mouth it's 
Some people saying mouth, some people saying nose. The art of living people would know the answer to this. I'm seeing some art of living people. Yeah. Okay. Most people, most people breathe out of the mouth, which is why I assumed it lazy. We breathe in with the nose. We should breathe out with the nose as well. But you know, over time, humans, we love the shortcuts. We love the shortcuts. So we're going to breathe out through the mouth. There's an issue with that, of course, and we will discuss it. Jennifer, I did notice that you you put you you breathe in with your um, nose and diaphragm. How did you know you breathe in with your diaphragm? What indication did you have that you breathe in your diaphragm, or do you just know the anatomy of your respiratory system? <laughs> um, it's a little bit of both because I have had choral training, so I know that that's how the proper way to breathe in. And then the reason I put breathe out of their mouth is because, well, from singing, because that's how you have to get sound out. So that's where you your breath comes out of. So I guess it's a little different for everyday breathing, maybe. I don't know. Um, so you have to project. So that's maybe different. But on a normal basis, um, we should use the nose. But yes, I get what you're saying. Okay. But how did you know you're using the diaphragm? Any indication um, of yeah, because when you breathe in, your diaphragm should expand, your stomach should go up, yeah. and which a lot of people think it should go the other way, but it yeah. actually goes out and expands. That's a good point. A lot of, we have so many, um, we're not sure what it should be. I mean, we learned it, all learned it in school, but we're not sure exactly how it should move because we know the diaphragm and anatomy, she have had a picture of them the lungs here, but we, the diaphragm, we don't usually use it. As a singer, you would. So that's different. You are trained to do so, to have that projection, that force that you need. But as I said, we only use 30% of our lungs, which is just the upper lungs alone. So we're getting a lot of stale air, mucus, whatever. It's a collecting there and we're not properly using it. And as Jennifer rightly said, our diaphragm, which is to the bottom of your lungs, if you remember your, your science from back in the day, um, the diaphragm expands, which means it goes down into your belly. So usually your belly should expand. I don't know if you ever heard of belly breathing, right? Um, it's a, you know, a layman term, but belly breathing. So sometimes you would see the belly expand and that that's how you know you're using your diaphragm. So we will experience a bit of that today and we will learn how to breathe properly as well. Right. Uh, breathing in through the nose, there's a lot, and everybody I think breathe in through the nose, which is good. There's a lot of benefits to doing that. Breathing in, taking in the air from the nose, it helps to filter out any, anything that shouldn't be there, as well as moisten the air going through. And it regulates the temperature of the air before it goes, enters our lungs. Okay. So if the breath is, sorry, if the air is too cold, it will warm it up as it goes through. If it's too hot, it's going to cool it down as it goes through. Right. And then we breathe in, goes into our lungs, expanding the diaphragm. And we have different indi physical indicators as well. The belly expands, the lungs expands, and the clavicle, the collarbone expands as well. So we have three lobes of the lungs. To breathe out, the diaphragm now collapses. The lungs relax. Clavicle relax, your collarbone. And the breath comes out. It should come out through the nose. We breathe in nutrients from the air. We know this. We breathe in oxygen. We need the oxygen as well as other gases. We breathe it in and absorbs through the bloodstream. When we breathe out, we're breathing out carbon dioxide. We're releasing toxins into the air. We're getting rid of things we shouldn't need, we don't need in the body. If you shortchange yourself and breathe out through your mouth, you're not releasing as much toxins or as many toxins as you should. Same distance in, 
same distant sounds allowing for more volume of, of toxins of air to be released. So on a normal basis, not quite when singing, but on a normal basis, breathing in through the nose, and breathing out through the, through the nose as well. And we will practice that today. You know, there is this scientist who talked about, um, who explored this. His name is, is James Nestor. And he had a number of issues. He had um, irritable bowel syndrome, like chronic irritable bowel syndrome. He had bronchitis. He had, um, he was very stressed with migraines, chronic migraines, and a host of other issues. Of course, he was going to his medical um, doctor, as you, you should, and he was on a lot of medication, but he did not find it really helping him. And this was at a young age fairly young age. He didn't see that the medication was really helping him. So as a scientist, he started to explore. A scientific journalist, right? He started to explore. He went to different universities, um, did experiments with a whole set. He started his journey with, um, with this. so he's from San Francisco. He started his journey from in San Francisco. He went to, Stanford to Harvard, he went to various universities in Europe, and then came back to the University of San Francisco. He discovered breath, which he calls a lost art. Breath is something that, as we said, take for granted what we need. He saw the benefits of breathing. He experimented with um, how we should breathe and the differences, as I just explained. He looked at the evolution of the, the nasal cavity over time and in humans, um, how it's become smaller. So we feel more restricted in our, our breath. And he also looked at different techniques. He came across the Art of Living Sky Breath and Meditation. He did the workshop in San Francisco. And he said after one session, he felt ridiculously better. <laughs> he couldn't believe how he was feeling. And as a scientist, that doubt entered his mind. And he said, you know, it has to be a one-off situation. This just happened, you know, just this one time. It won't happen again. But it did happen again. He felt better and he continues to use it to this day. But again, as a scientist, he wanted to know why it worked. So he went to these different universities and he experimented. He did a specific study on sky breath and saw how it works with your immune system. The problem today is that we are stressed out. We have a lot more stress. And this is not only adults. This is coming from children right up. There's a lot more stress today, a lot more expectations, whatever it is. We're bombarded by so much social media, everything. There's a lot more stress on us today. According to American Medical Association, 60 to 80% of all diseases are caused by stress. 60 to 80 percent of all diseases causes by stress. Sky breath meditation allows the body a chance to reduce the stress. It reduces the stress, gives your body a chance now to heal itself. So it works through the immune system and there are a whole host of other benefits. Today, James Nestor does not have any of his, his issues, or at least to a lesser extent. And he continues his sky breath meditation today. I'm not saying it's a cure-all, but it's a chance to do something for yourself. And we are going to explore today 
why it works. I hope everybody is game for that, right? Able to do it. If you're in your office, I hope you're able to get your colleagues, tell them, hey, we're going to do something just now. <laughs> now, the sky breath meditation is a yogic technique. What do you all know about yoga? Anyone? What do you know about yoga? Again, you can type in the chat on mute. Let me know. It's such a, um, a buzzword these days, yoga. Everybody wants to know about yoga and do yoga. But even things like bear yoga and wine yoga and different versions of it. But what is it really? Yoga calms you, uh, calms your nervous system. Yes. You have to be pretty flexible to do it. Have to be flexible to do it. Mm -hmm. all right the breath control yes amazingly people don't think of yoga with breath but yes yeah. so yoga practice which promotes mind body centeredness ah meditation is included as well very nice so yoga by definition it harmonizes the body which we know um that's we know the different postures the different um twists and turns standing in your head all of that is included so it's about harmonizing the body but more than that it's about harmonizing the mind and spirit it's not religious but it's a tool that you can use to tune into yourself, to be more connected to yourself. Yeah. Connection and mind and body, yes, postures. So it's harmonizing body, mind, and spirit. That's what yoga does. And there are three basic techniques. First is that body. First is, uh, it's called postures or asanas right? Sanskrit asanas. And those are the twists and the turns. And where, um, I believe it was Jennifer said, you have to be flexible. Now, do you have to be flexible to do yoga? Or does yoga allow you to become flexible? So that's one of the myths with yoga. You do not have to be flexible to do yoga. By doing yoga, you will become flexible. Um, so that's one, the postures. Two, it's breathing. Breath is a huge part of yoga called pranayama. Pranayama, um, I'm sure you heard of chi, right? A lot of people know what chi is. So chi is that Chinese uh, term for the energy, energy within us, right? Um, the Sanskrit term for chi is prana. So prana is about using the breath to energize the body. So it's called pranayama. And the third is what we call meditation. Meditation or relaxation. Um, I, I met... Um, we did a, a session with some nuns at time and they called it contemplation. So just different words, same thing. There's another term being thrown around called mindfulness. Mm, mindfulness is like a, um, the little brother to meditation. <laughs> um, mindfulness just makes you aware. And that's mindfulness is another big buzzword. Everybody wants to be mindful and, and do mindfulness training, but Mindfulness is just making you aware of the present moment. Meditation allows for a conscious rest. So we have looked at breath a little bit. We have looked at yoga, um, basically what it is. Are you all ready to do something? Yes? Hopefully. So you could just do it on a chair you don't need to be on a mat or anything because this was a lunchtime session 
I assumed it would be um, people at work as well, maybe just logging on. So we're on a chair. I'm on a chair as well. And we're just going to do as much as you can. Right? Are you all game? Hi, Hazel. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Arisha and Susan, I'm seeing as well. All right. Great. So you can just sit comfortably in a chair. Um, not, a, a, not a chair with wheels and not one that's unstable. Right? A stable chair. So we're going to look at the three techniques of yoga and breath, um, postures, and the meditation or relaxation, if that's okay with everyone. Right. Now, as I assumed uh, this is lunchtime and you may be at work, we're going to do some things that you can use at work subtly without anyone noticing. <laughs> so first thing is, you know, we've been online quite a lot. We're looking at these screens and it's, and it's not to blame COVID, I'm sorry. Yes, COVID increased it a little bit, but you know that phone, we're addicted to those phones. We're always on those phones as well. So we're gonna do something for the eyes. So let's start with the eyes and come back close. Start with the eyes. And we're just gonna close them, easy. Close the eyes and then like really squeeze them shut and then open wide. Squeeze shut and open wide. Three more times on your own. Now, keeping your head facing forward without moving the head, we're going to move the eyes alone. So let's look up without moving the head. Look down, up, down. Three more times. And now we're going to the right, left, right, left. Sound like a super song. Let's keep going three more times. I should make a super song with yoga next time. And now we're going to go diagonal. So top right corner, bottom left corner. Four more times. Go slow. No race. There's no rush. I'm keeping up track of time today. Top left corner. Bottom right corner. And squeeze shut again. Open wide. Do that three more times. And relax. If you're comfortable touching your face, we can start with our ears. So I'm gonna hold from the air lobe to the edge and gently, very subtly make circles. Reverse. If ever you are feeling sleepy at work, this is something you can do, wakes you right up. Maybe not after you eat a, a big meal um, for lunch, but this is something you can do on a normal basis. We have so many nerve endings in our ears. Just interacting with them can wake up your brain again. All right, let's start, let's go with the neck now. And we're gonna introduce the breath as well. 
Breathe in, remember, through the nose and breathe out through the nose. We're not forcing it, just a light breath. So breathe in and out. Breathe in, take the head back, chin to ceiling. Breathe out, head forward, chin to chest. And really push the chin into the, the, push the chin down so that we're stimulating our thyroid. Breathe in, head back. Breathe out, head down. Three more times. Put the head down, breathe in, and let's rotate the head to the right. Back and breathe out as you come forward. Continue. Nice and slow. If you're doing this for the first time, you may hear some little cricks and cracks. Once there's no pain, There should never be any pain in yoga. Now, a lot of our stress we feel in our neck and shoulders. So while you're doing this, if you feel any tension anywhere, stay in that position. Keep breathing in and out till it eases and then continue. And when next your chin comes to your chest, let's reverse direction. Breathing in on the left. Breathing out as you come forward on the right. Again, staying in position if you're feeling any tension. And keep the head down for a moment. Head in a neutral position. Breathe in, shoulders to the ears. Breathe out, release. Breathe in and out. Three more times. Now make sure that your hips are all the way back into the chair so that you are fully supported on the backrest. Feet flat on the floor if you can and hip width apart. Your back is gonna automatically, your spine is automatically going to be straight. Breathe in, let's raise our hands in front of us. Breathe out, stretch forward. Breathe out. Breathe in, open the fingers wide. And breathe out, close. Breathe in and out.
And let's rotate the wrist. If you do a lot of typing. And reverse. Palms facing the ceiling. Bend and extend. Holding on to the shoulders, bring your elbows together, up and around as best as you can. Again, you should never feel any pain. You do the best that you can. If the elbows can't touch, that's fine. Breathe in as the elbows go up, breathe out as they come forward. And next time the elbows come forward, let's reverse. So besides flexibility, yoga has other benefits, uh, weight loss, um, stress relief, those we talked about, increased energy, which you normally get from the breath, improved immunity, we talked about that as well. Um, also improved better relationships, why? Because we have a more of a presence, more of a um, awareness of the present moment and a inner peace. Just to name a few. And finish the round. And you can shake out, shake out the arms. We're also stimulating various organs. Like I said, with the thyroid, we're gonna stimulate, the breath obviously stimulates the uh, respiratory system. And we're gonna stimulate the digestive system now. So hopefully you didn't eat yet. We're gonna to twist to the right side. Breathe in, take the right arm up. Breathe out, place behind you, maybe on the backrest. Left hand on the outside of the right thigh and you're automatically twisting to the right side breathe in and breathe out breathe in and as you breathe out Contract your abdomen and twist a bit more. Slowly release and let's go into the next side. Breathe in, left arm up, breathe out behind you. We're twisting to the left. Breathe in and out. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, it contracts your abdomen and twist some more.
a simple technique is just stimulating the digestive system, stimulating the intestine to keep moving, stimulating your pancreas to produce um, insulin. And slowly release. And then our feet, just in our legs. One more, one more thing. Let's see. If you can, cross your legs. Bring your right um, ankle across your left thigh creating like a figure four. Breathe in, and as you breathe out, bend forward. This is now stimulating your sciatica nerve and the hips and, and thighs, relieving any pressure there. As you sit a lot, this is going to help. Release. Next side. One side is always going to be easier than the other. <laughs> breathe in. And as you breathe out, lean forward. And slowly release. One more. Breathe in. Can you hold behind the right thigh? And bring to your chest. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, attempt to get the head to the knee. It doesn't have to reach. And release. Next side. Hold beneath the left thigh. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, attempt head towards the knee. And release. Back into the chair, relax. You may close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through the nose and breathe out through the nose. Hands should be resting on your thighs or knees, palms facing the ceiling. A deep breath in and out. Keep breathing in and out slowly. Becoming aware of your body. What parts of the body are moving? Is the belly moving? The clavicle, collarbone, chest? Does it feel natural or labored? What's the temperature of the breath? As it enters the nostrils and as it leaves the nostrils. Are 
How fast do you breathe in? Can you slow it down? Breathe in for longer. Breathe out for longer. So people usually tell us when they see we're upset or angry, take a breath and they're right. The breath helps with our emotions. This has been scientifically proven. Your emotions and your breath and therefore your mind are connected. The way you breathe can affect how you feel. And this is the power that the breath can give you. Not only affect how you feel, but give you the power, the control to use the breath as a tool to manage the mind. Sky breath meditation is proven to help you calm the mind so that you make clearer decisions. And now let's do another breath. Hands at your shoulders. And a loose fist, elbows bent. Breathe in, take the arms up, open the palms, breathe out, bring it back down nice and slow. Back to loose fist. Breathe in, hands up, open the palms, breathe out. Bring it back down. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Two more times. Relax the hands. Normal breaths in and out. Becoming aware of the sensations in the body. Is your heart beating faster, slower? What are the thoughts running through your mind? Let's go for another round. Hands in a loose fist at your shoulders. Breathe in, hands up, open the palms. Breathe out, bring it back down, loose fist. Breathe in. And up three more times. Now 
finishing your round, you may relax your hands, palms facing the ceiling. Keep the eyes closed and normal breaths in and out. Take a deep breath in and let go. Become aware of the noises around you. Hum of the AC or fan. Someone moving next to you or in another room. Sound of traffic. Accept all of the noises. You are now in harmony with your environment. Take a deep breath in and let go. Become aware of your physical body. This body is a beautiful gift given to you. Honor and respect your body. Become aware of your feet, only your feet. Legs. Pelvis. chest, arms, head, the whole body. the whole body. Take a deep breath in and let go.
become aware of your thoughts. Whether good thoughts or bad thoughts. Let them come and let them go. You are now in harmony with your thoughts. Take a deep breath in. And let go. Become aware of your feelings. Your peace and joy. Take a deep breath in and let go. Become aware of your feelings. Become aware of your thoughts. Become aware of the sensations in your body. Become aware of your surroundings. Take a deep breath in and let go. Very gently and gradually. And you open your eyes. Take another deep breath in. And breathe out with a smile. All right. Was it good? You can always type in the chat on mute and let me know. Thank you for taking this pause for yourself and your lunchtime. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope forward to looking forward to seeing you maybe at my sky breath meditation workshop and we'll see you thank you for and connect have a good day everyone hi jenny ah it was amazing great very nice Fantastic. Thank you, Jenny.
Enjoy your day, everyone. Bye. All right, good. All right, so that's it. All right, take care, everyone. All right, so I will end it and have the recording for those who want it. Thanks, Jim. All right, take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, having you. Okay.